In my last video, I talked about some mathematical operations we can perform with vectors and quickly introduced this idea of a parallelogram law. In this video, I want to talk a little bit more about the parallelogram law by performing a numerical example that you might be typically asked to uh, look at in a statics class. So before I can do that, we need to introduce the law of sines and the law of cosines. We're going to be using the law of sines and the law of cosines to uh, work our example. So what are the law of sines and cosines? There, there are two laws, two expressions that we have that relates the sides of a length of a triangle to the angle of a triangle. So I've drawn a triangle down here in this triangle ABC, capital A, capital B, and capital C are the vertices. And you can see that lowercase a, lowercase b, and lowercase c are the length of a side of a triangle and they are a cross from the vertice. So capital A is a cross from lowercase a. The angles are in Greek. They're alpha, beta, and gamma. And alpha goes with A, beta goes with B, and gamma goes with C. So if you look at this law of sines, you see it's a ratio of the length of the side A over the sine of alpha. It's equal to the ratio of the length of the side B over the sine of beta. And then there's also the C over sine of gamma. But the law of cosines also uses the same notation. So we will, the length of this side C right here is equal to the square root of A squared plus B squared minus 2 times A times B times the cosine of this gamma. So the example I want to look at is right here. In, in our example, I have two different uh, vectors. I have one vector with a magnitude of 15 newtons, and it's 40 degrees from this horizontal, and this horizontal is this red line. And I have this 5 newton uh, vector. Magnitude is 5 newtons, and it's 10 degrees below this horizontal. And what I want to figure out is this if I add these two together, what are their resultant vectors? And what is the angle of our resultant vector from uh, the horizontal? So from this red line, what is the angle that the resultant vector is at? So to solve this problem, the first thing we want to do is to construct a parallelogram. And in order to construct a parallelogram, we have to see that, okay, we have five newtons down here. But because we're dealing with vectors, we can also have five newtons at this point right here and this sort of looks the same. So here's our five newton uh, vector. We also know that between these two vectors is the 15 newtons. We know this because if when we, we're doing vector addition, uh, vector addition is commutative and uh, it doesn't matter if we add 15 plus 5 or 5 plus 15 but we're going to get to the same place. So now this is our resultant. If we go from where we started, where the two tails meet, to where the two heads of these vectors meet, this is our resultant force right here. And we don't know the length of this. It's Right now, it's just r. But we're going to use the law of cosines to uh, figure out what the length of r is. And let's, let's call this a. Let's call this b. Uh, we know that r is going to be equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared minus 2 times ab times the cosine of gamma. Now, in our triangle right here, gamma is going to be this angle right here because this is across from our side r, just like in our construction of the law of sine and law of cosine triangle, uh, gamma is across from uh, length C. And that's what we're looking for, C, gamma, A, B. So we have to figure out what that is. And we're going to figure that out like this. We're going to uh, say that this entire, this entire distance right here is 50 degrees. We know from here to here is 50 de uh, 10 degrees. From here to here is 40 degrees, so the entire distance is 50 degrees. We also know that this is a parallelogram, and this angle 
is going to be equal to this angle. So this entire angle right here is 50 degrees. This holds true for every parallelogram. And another thing we know, another fact about a parallelogram, is that the, the sum of all of its interior angles, so all of the angles on the inside, is going to be equal to 360 degrees. So all the angles are equal to 360 degrees. I think that got cut off, but I'm sorry. Uh, so for us, that means we're going to have 50 plus 50 plus some angle we don't know plus another angle we don't know. But these two angles we don't know are the same, right? Here, 50 uh, degrees is the same as this 50 degrees. This angle right here is the same as this angle right here. So in a parallelogram, we're going to have uh, 50 plus 50. If we call this angle theta, and we call this angle theta, we're going to have plus theta plus theta is equal to 360. We're going to have 100 plus 2 theta is equal to 360. I just combined my 50 and my 2 thetas. And we're going to have theta is equal to 130 degrees. So we know that this angle right here is 130 degrees. Uh, and this angle right here is 130 degrees. So Gamma, I, I probably I should have called this gamma, but is our theta, and this is equal to 130 degrees. So if we put all our numbers in, we have the square root of 15 squared plus 5 squared minus 2 times 15 times 5 times the cosine of 130. And when we solve this, we're going to get what the length of our resultant vector is. And we get that this is equal to 18.6 newtons. And this makes sense. This makes sense because it is the resultant is going to be our largest number, and this is bigger than both 15 newtons and 5 newtons. Now, we know what our resultant vector is, but we don't know what this angle is. And the angle we're looking for is this angle right here. So how can we figure this out? Well, let's redraw our triangle. Let's redraw this lower triangle right here. And when we do that, just it's going to be a little bit neater to look at than this mess I have sort of going right here. Uh, so here's our length of 18.6, here's our resultant, here's our 15, 15 newton uh, vector, and green, here is our 5 newton vector. So all I've done is I've redrawn this lower triangle. And let's put in the angles. We know this angle right here is 130. We're not sure what this angle is. And we're not sure what this angle is. So let's put our horizontal line in. And we know this right here, this angle, this part of the angle right here is 10. But we're not sure how uh, much of an angle this is. So we can find this with the law of sines. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, uh, again, if we call this is equal to A, this is equal to B, this is equal to our C. We know this C. We know the angle of gamma or a theta, 18.6 over the sine of 130 this part of our equation right here is going to be equal to, we're looking for this total angle. So 15 divided by the sine of, let's call this total angle alpha. And we can solve for what alpha is. Typically I just put this in my calculator and solve it, uh, but to explicitly uh, write out all the steps, 
we'll cross multiply because we have an equal sign and we get 18.6 times the sine of alpha is equal to 15 times the sine of 130. So the sine of alpha is equal to 15 times the sine of 130 divided by 18.6 and alpha is going to be equal to the inverse sine of 15 times the sine of 130 divided by 18.6 and we get alpha is equal to 38 point 38.14 uh, 15 degrees so this is what this entire angle right here is equal to now if we look at this right here we know this entire angle right here is equal to 38.15 we know that this part of the angle below the horizontal is equal to 10 degrees so this part of our angle above the horizontal is equal to 28.15 degrees and again we know that because this 28.15 degrees plus this 10 degrees which is beneath the horizontal which we're not interested in has to be equal to the total angle of 38.15 degrees so this will be the angle that we're looking for 38 uh 28.15 degrees and our resultant vector is uh, 18.6 newtons. So there's just one more thing I want to say about solving these parallelograms and that is to be careful when you are trying to find this resultant right here. You want to be careful when you're finding this resultant because in some problems you're going to encounter it's going to look like you can use the law of signs to solve this resultant. And in some cases this is true but this isn't always the case. So what's happening with the law of signs is sometimes the information you're given is you're given a side, side, and an angle. You're fixing two sides and you're fixing an angle. And it's like this. It's like if we look at a triangle right here and we know what this side is. And we know what this angle is. We know what this angle is and we know what this side is and we're going to be given this side right here. So these are what, what we're setting. We're setting this angle, we're setting this side, and we're setting this side. There's an ambiguous case because we don't know if uh, this, this particular side is like this or it can be the same length and it can be right like that. And this happens because if you think about this, if you think about this as sort of our center of a circle and we rotate this around and this is the same radius, it's going to intersect at two points. So this is this is the ambiguous case. This is sort of like in ge geometry. While you can't use side-side angle to prove that two triangles are uh, equal to each other. Uh, this is why it, they might not be equal to each other. This side, this side, and this angle is the same as this side, this side, and this angle. So uh, when you're solving for this resultant, you always want to use the law of cosines if you can. If you can because the law of signs might give you an ambiguous case. And a lot of example when you take this in college are designed. So if you use the law of signs to figure out your resultant, you're not going to get the right answer. You need to use the law of cosines. Uh, the law of signs will give you the correct answer when you're looking for an angle. So you want to use the law of signs when you're uh, looking for an angle. When you use the law of signs on to find the angle the resultant's at, you're using a fully defined triangle uh, at eight, uh, you're using side, side, side. So this is just defined as side, 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 and this triangle is not ambiguous. There's only one solution. So that's why you can use the law of signs uh, to figure out the angle 
but you need to use the law of cosines to figure out the resultant length.